video daily show, and today I'm uh, at the China program, and I'm with Li Chen. Hi, I'm Li Chen uh, from Hua Medicine, a new China startup, and uh, it's a great pleasure today in uh, working with Bio and create this uh, China program. There are three things I'd like to cover. One is the word that you used in your talk called returnees. There's a lot of interest in that of a lot of Chinese students who come to the U.S. Sure. What's a returnee? Right. The returnee means they come and they return. Right. It's representing a group of people who came over to U.S. roughly about 20 years ago, and they came, they study, they established themselves in their you know relatively related work, and went back to China and started their business. And some of them become the business leader, others become the science and technology leader, others become the people in the ministry and then running the policy making. And you're a returnee. I'm one of them. One of them, good. And then the other way, say returnee, um, in Chinese means hai gui. And hai gui have shared a similar sound as sea turtle. So if you heard sea turtle, and then they also returnee. I go to the, back to the same spot, to the roots. Yes. And you use the term ecosystem. I think there's a lot of interest in how that term is used in a comprehensive way, the way you described it. Right. Um, if you think about it, you know, drug discovery development is not a simple thing. It usually requires many things to happen, right? It's just like you have a golden seed you plant to the soil, and you all require the proper soil, the sunlight, the care, and then the whole thing that create a self-feeding system that can self-sustain and support each other. And in drug discovery, that's the same type of environment that we like to create. And this type of system exists in the States, but was not in China 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. With a group of returnees, and in the support with the Chinese government, now we are building up this so-called ecosystem where we can have technology, we can have people, we can have policies and the environment allow this biotech innovation to happen. And this is what we commonly say, the system will support the industry. So this is partnership at a grand scale. Exactly. And do you like to use the term supercluster to describe this? Well, supercluster certainly is a part of the ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, many places like uh, Zhangjiang High Tech Park, Beijing Zhongguancun area, and then now with this 20 plus national funded country level science and technology park, and they form the clusters. Okay. The super Fantastic. clusters with all the necessary infrastructure to support innovation. But in China as a whole, those clusters work together and foster and creating the bigger environment. And that's where the system is mm -hmm. all about. My last question has to do with three letters, F-D-A. F-D-A. Now, everybody has regulatory issues. Sure. You're starting out with a Chinese regulatory system. Right. But still, in the long run, Everyone looks to the FDA mm -hmm. as a model, or sure. maybe even a model to do it better. Right. So where are you with that? I think there's a two things when you get into the food and drug uh, regulation, right? FDA over the last 40 years and 50 years have done a super, superior job of getting the safety into the people's mind and then also be able to run the clinical trial properly and especially using a statistic way of based mm -hmm. uh, process, right? And what is missing in this new environment where the disease become more complex and then require a longer term treatment and then multiple treatment schedules, there's the innovation need to be implanted in mm -hmm. to the clinical trials. And then I think in that way, both China SFDA and then US FDA need to study and learn and work together with the clinical people and the clinical physicians and then redefine some of the way of developing new drugs. I think adoptive design, biomarker driven design and then drug approval now has become 
one of the leading, I think, the frontier approach by the regulatory agencies, and I do see China is approaching that pretty fast. And what's the respect for the Chinese regulatory agencies for the FDA? I think Chinese regulatory agencies show a very high respect to the FDA approaches in the science-driven drug approval and also the risk management process. Mm -hmm. right. And one stage beyond the approval, mm -hmm. what about real-world evidence? Does the drug work in ordinary patients, not those selected for clinical trials? Is there a focus yet in China on that approach? Yes, I think uh, now in China, the SFDA have initiated a phase four study and also follow up trials for many new drugs get approved uh, into the, uh, the market. And then um, phase four trial become a common practice now in China, especially the drug first proved in the US and in Europe and then eventually get approved commercialized in China. And, and then the phase four trial was more tailor made to the local commercial, local people, mm -hmm. local patients, mm -hmm. and then make that a safer. And then the feedback to the uh, drug development company is great because then you'll have a much larger database on the safety and efficacy with the different ethical background. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Lee Chen. This is Dan Terrace from BioVideo Daily Show. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.